Moses. This is the Umbulgari track. One of the wildest, most remote adventures you'll ever experience. We're just over halfway and 11 days into this epic track. This is loose. As we fight against conditions, breakages and dwindling supplies. It's the final Jerry and camp. Everybody is running out of fuel. Ahead of us lies 180 k's of tough low range. And with fuel running low and barely a spare tyre left between us, our mission is simple. Make it out, whatever it takes. Holy How did this happen? Oh my goodness. The journey so far has been some of the most insane four-wheel driving we've ever attempted. Pushing through a track that hasn't seen a vehicle in two very big wet seasons. This is as sketchy as it gets. We forded massive rivers, lost the track time and time again. We lost our guide and nearly lost a vehicle. Right now, we're parked up on the rocks of the Berkeley River, where we'd hoped to meet up with Ronnie, who's bringing much needed fuel and spares. But we've learnt that he hasn't even been able to make it onto the track yet. And that leaves us with a few challenges. The Berkeley River offers some amazing fishing spots that rarely see a fisherman. And with the fridges running pretty low, we're taking matters into our own hands and seeing if we can catch us some dinner. The Kimberley is teeming with life and the Berkeley is no exception. The river is chock-a-block full of barra and you can barely drop a lure in before it gets smashed. And soon enough, Shono snagged a good one. <laughs> this is a beautiful little saltwater barra. And I'm absolutely stoked with that. That's a good sized fish in anyone's language. I just heard on the two way as well, that Graham's up a bit further. He's got his PB barra. And the good news is we're just starting to run real low on food. So much appreciated by everyone in the crew, I reckon. Look at that. Look at that. With some much needed supplies to stash in the fridge, we get ready to cross the Berkeley River. Between us and the track exit at the Columbaroo Road lies a series of big river crossings, including the Berkeley, the King George, and the Drysdale Rivers. And of course, the spaces between them are filled with countless unknown bogs, marshes, and tributaries to keep us busy. Yep, this final leg is gonna be a huge adventure. Well, mate, the Berkeley. The infamous Berkeley, mate. Ever since we came there that time, what, six years ago, I've dreamed about coming back to this place. It's mainly for the fishing, mate, and it certainly lived up to expectations. Yeah, you slayed it, mate, you slayed it. You've done very, very well. When you came walking across here this morning, I thought, crikey Moses. It's uh, something like a pin-up show over there, holding onto a fish. It's good advice to be nice to the bloke with a bunch of barra fillets in his fridge, but another bloke that needs a clap on the back is Jesse who's donated a couple of 33s to me and the D-Max. He's now going to have to tackle the rest of the track in two-wheel drive. Things a little bit trickier now. We've got the 35s on the back. Obviously, because they're a bigger size tyre, we can't run full drive anymore because, obviously, the transfer case spins the front and rear diffs at the same speed. And the back is going to be going at a different speed at the front now that they've got different size tyres. So we can't even use low range because it's not your conventional full drive with freewheeling hubs. I've worked out how to turn the locker on in too high, so that's helping a bit, but yeah, it's a bit tricky. After so many days pushing through this unforgiving track, the rest of the convoy is looking a bruised and battered lot too. Tim and Harry in the Mitz Alloy 79 are fighting locker issues. Oh, that's proper. Yeah, it's a good one. While I've exhausted all my spare tyres and then some. Meanwhile, Rocket is dealing with a leaking turbo and has to engage the front diff lock every time he wants four wheel drive, which makes navigating the tight track an extra challenge. But our biggest obstacle remains the same as it has for the last 10 days. And that's just staying on the track itself. Hey, Graham, you got a copy back there, mate? Yeah, I'm trying to hold on, mate. <laughs> Steer at the same time. Oh, I know. I thought this would be a lot easier going, mate. I thought the other side of the Berkeley, once we made it there, we're on the home stretch. But uh, <laughs> no, it's not exactly the case. No, mate, I had high hopes. I, I mean, I wasn't expecting a highway across this side, but I kind of thought maybe you know, a few of the guys from Columbaroo might have popped out here and the track might have been far more discernible, but no, nah, not the case, mate. We've still got a fair old road to hoe here. I don't know when the last car sort of come down this track, but even so, there's been a, obviously a big wet season and this is, I think, the track and it's been like sort of washed away. Yeah, and it could go like this for 150k, mate. Oh, that's slow going. First year, low range and crawling, <laughs> 150k. 
I don't want to think about it too much. We've still got a long way to go. No spares, low on fuel. I'm down to under a quarter on my fuel, mate. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not even thinking about it. Yeah, right. righto. Let's get them all done and um, hope we don't come across anything that stops the show. Now, there's such a thing as famous last words. And up ahead is a very suspicious looking crossing. Even with the drone up, we're struggling to find where the exit actually is. And with the murky water being the perfect place for a croc to hide itself, no one's keen to wade in and find out. The Mitz boys have been following a GPS line with great success over the past days. And Tim's decided to follow the suggested map route into the creek. This is exciting. Somehow though, I think this is not the line. Very soft, that's very soft. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no! No! There you go, back, hard, not too much. And then forward, and back. You're gonna do this, you're gonna do this. Ah, oh, no, no, you're not gonna do this. Sorry, mate. Yeah, I like this one. Yeah. With the benefit of hindsight, this other crossing point to the right is suddenly looking way better. Oh, this is a good path. But first, we better get the boys unstuck. One of the perils about going first is you got to try and find new ground. It's usually in hindsight, you see a better way. <laughs> it's no good for Tim right now. Jesse soon got Shawno's Rumba hooked up to the big 79, ready to get the boys out. That is way softer than you'd think. Guess it just goes to show that maps do have their limits. And with the track changing every season, you can't entirely rely on any of them out here. While we can see a better entry line, the exit is still something of a mystery, with a number of spots that could be the track. So while we really don't like the risk, Sean's decided he's got to get his feet wet. Now, crocs are a real threat out here, so it's not something to be taken lightly, and Sean is suitably apprehensive. <laughs> I'm just scaring the crocs away for you, mate. <laughs> That's deep. John soon found the original exit. It's a nasty little pinch out of the river. And given he has two sets of lockers over the mitts 79, we've decided it's better to send him through first. This water cross, I've just walked it, which is not a great idea in croc country, but you can see the bottom, the boys are on croc lookout. I just don't want to get stuck in here, that's the key. Yeah, that's definitely the crossing. The exit's a bit out of going. Just quite a steep little exit. <laughs> With the aid of both lockers, Shauna was finally made it up and over. <laughs> Yeah, that was sick. It feels good to be this side of the river. Here he comes. Second attempt. Redemption. Ready, Harry? This is it, mate, I reckon. False start on the last one. So far, so good. Oh, I'm gonna chew my tongue on this. He's getting a big thong slap and run up. <laughs> yes! Yeah! yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> <laughs> that was sick. <laughs> awesome. Okay, time for Rocket and the Big Auto. Rightio, Rocket. This is a uh, fairly daunting crossing with a camper trailer, mate. It is. All I can do is do my best. Front diff locks on, hard to steer, but let's give it a go. There's a bit of manoeuvring required here to line up the Maverick camper for the climb. Pretty firm under you there, Rocket. It's more than you think. The rocket has to give it a few big cracks. The back 
pressure with the water in here, so it doesn't let it blow up. I think we're going to have to call a safety and call it from here. Trailer's in a ripper spot, mate. You did well to get that there. Tell you what, I love these automatics. It makes it so easy to just drive without spinning your wheels. Nice and easy. Let the winch do the work. And up I come. It'll be ready. With a bit less fanfare than the Toyotas, I've got the D-Max up and over. And behind me, Jesse puts in a huge effort to pilot the Goodyear truck through. Mud inside. After every river crossing, the track seems to open up for a little bit while we make faster progress. But soon enough, the track narrows down again and gets lost in thick grass. Sean is still up front and doing a great job seeking out the track. But just as we start to get some miles down, things go pear-shaped. Please, please just stop. Yeah, I'm nearly on my side. Okay, I'm just Got some angles going on there, Sean. Don't, don't, don't push on the car. No, 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 no. Oh, how did this happen? That's a fair old predicament you've got yourself in. How's that? I was pushing a track through and um, I was leading the charge and the track literally just fell away. You couldn't see it through the grass. So, so I just, I just came through this hole and the whole vehicle just rolled. Sean is sitting on an absolute knife edge here. And if it wasn't for the ladder rack on the 30, he'd be parked on his lid right now. As quick as possible, we've got the D-Max in position and the runver is hooked up to secure the rig and prevent it from rolling any further. Need a blanket, boys? Righto. Nice and easy there. How's that? The angle's getting better already. Do you reckon I'll still leave that oil? I'll be fine. You're fine? Angle, you'll be fine. Yeah, you're good. And then what you'll do, you'll have to steer slightly right. Take the flex out in it. Yeah, I'm gonna go back up again. Gonna go back up. Soon enough, the Dirty 30 is back on all four wheels. But now there's another problem. Well, just keep it on, just until. Keep it on until I get him up this bit, yeah. I'm sure. It is in park. Oh no, it's cranking over. What I think's happened is I've just been on my side for just a little bit too long and um, I think the fuel has run away. Um, so I just need to pump it up, hand prime it up. You see the pump? Yeah, that was real loose. It was very, very loose. It was really abrupt as well. Yeah, it just went, it just went, oh, there's a hole there. And then it just went, oh, <laughs> Big now, this could be a real problem. If we can't get the 30 started, we're going to be in a world of hurt here. Yeah. Well, it shouldn't have run. That's, that's, that's pretty odd if it ran out right there. There wouldn't be much in it. He didn't have a lot of fuel in the car because of the big angle. <coughs> trying to start it, it looks like it's pulled up a big heap of air. So we're just trying to pump it through manually to see if we can get it up. The angle he's on now it should should work, but he is under quarter of a tank. At the moment. Yeah. Yeah. 
baby. Oh, yeah. I'm shook now. <laughs> Come down now, turn left. Yeah. One of your more insane lines, mate. Oh. <sighs> well, I think I need a moment in the shade. <laughs> I can't believe that just happened so fast, it wasn't funny. We just happened out of the blue. You can't see, the grass is sort of eight foot tall, you're driving along and all the next minute you're in a hole. Yeah, I might need to stop the car and just get out for a bit, I think. Well, I reckon we can all be thanking our lucky stars after that, cause that could have gone a whole lot worse. I wonder why. Mate, I, that had me so shook. I just, <laughs> that was unbelievable. <laughs> Beers are okay. I didn't even bust a beer, that's oh, good to see. I was so concerned about that. That's a uh, this, this is what saved the day. It was literally sitting on the Mike Coleman in this yeah, ladder rack. If that had broken the fridge, I'd have been gutted. <laughs> Same here, mate. If that had busted your fridge, <laughs> right. as a word of wise, put the fridge on the other side next time and it counterbalances, you won't oh, roll over as easy. From now on, I'll make the decision to roll on the other side, not this side. That's a great idea, great <laughs> idea. Protect the fridge at all costs. Are you good? Are you shook? Are you right? Um, Can you keep going? Yeah, I might go a little bit slower this time. I think it's a good I, idea. I had a bit of confidence and then... You took off? Yeah. All, all right. right. Ain't no place for halfway crooks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, baby. <laughs> After that little incident, it's only fair that Sean and the 30 take a bit of a break from the head of the convoy, so it's time for the mighty D-Max to step up. Something you might have noticed is the build-up of spin effects and grass seeds on all of the vehicles. It's across the bonnets, it's underneath the vehicles, it's just about everywhere. And one thing you've got to be really careful of out here, of course, it's not letting that catch fire, getting too close to your exhaust or just about any other combustible means that might catch that alight. It's a real possibility, and as has happened multiple times to people throughout the years. Now, we're all carrying fire extinguishers in the car. Key to a fire extinguisher, though, is being able to get it when you need it lickety split, not buried under a mountain of crap in the back of your vehicle. So, what I've done in the D-Max, um, Cap Industries, they're a uh, company that make a bracket that goes down there and mounts to seat mounts of your four-wheel drive and your fire extinguisher sits in there and you can get to it with one finger, you undo the clip, you can grab your fire extinguisher and you're good to go. It's just a really good way to make sure that you've got that situation in hand should the unthinkable happen and some of this grass seeds or spin effects goes up. With the day getting on, it's almost time to find ourselves a camp, but there's still a little fun to have along the way. <laughs> Rocket's been absolutely pummeling the camper trailer, but so far it seems to be more than up to the punishment. Jesse's been pushing hard all day in two-wheel drive, but this soft sand is just a bit too much for him. I just stopped as soon as it started to sink. <laughs> Luckily, the Maverick camper has got some handy rear recovery points, and soon Jesse is hooked up and winched out. Thank you. Hey, Rocket, you got a copy, mate? Yes, mate. How's the auto going, mate? It hasn't got too hot, is it? Nah, we're well set up in this thing, mate. This thing's never going to get hot. Hey, how do you do that, mate? Like, obviously, if you've got an aftermarket cooler, is that the key? Because these days are, what, 40 degrees, you're towing through some pretty heavy country. Well, look, obviously, automatic transmissions are all about heat. If you can control the heat, you've got a great transmission. It's, you know, heat's the greatest nemesis of an automatic. In the case of the conversions, you know, we already obviously put big, massive, genuine oil coolers in when we do the conversions. I actually already noticed that Jesse has actually got one of our actually transmission coolers, one of our big dual cooler kits in the car. So you don't have to be towing to actually need a cooler. If you've just got, you know, you've got a 200 series, you've got a dual cab ute or any sort of modern vehicle with an auto, can you just get a kit that pops straight up? Yeah, we've got a massive range of all Australian made oil coolers. We've got them for everything. You can all buy them all online, you know, they're easy to find. Good advice, isn't it? Cheap insurance, mate. Little cooler up the front and then you don't have to worry about your auto too much. You can drive tracks like this, tow, do whatever you like and uh, you won't burn it out. With the sun dipping below the horizon, a perfect camp spot has presented itself right on cue off the side of the track. It's been a big day and we've made some great progress. And I think we're all ready for an iron jack or two and a good feed. How's this, eh? Pulling up to camp. Light is just about perfect. We'll get a fire going pretty soon. I'm gonna get a cold beer. It's about that time of day. And have a go with that. Got a stack of barra fillets in the Mike Coleman here. So the boys, well, they're gonna eat well tonight. I'll tell you what, and I'll remind them 
We caught a few fish today. I reckon this is about the perfect sort of campsite. And it's just off the side of the track. Nothing too spectacular, but anywhere in the Kimberley is like this, just magical. Uh, one of the things I've absolutely loved about this trip so far is the fact that we've just been off the grid for such a long period of time. Every single meal nearly that we cook is on a fire, on an open fire, which is unreal. You know, you got some pretty good mates along for the journey. Cold beers, fresh barra, and a Kimberley campsite. I reckon it doesn't get much better than that, in my opinion. Stoke this up, get some coals. Tim's making some chips to go with the fish tonight. Are you kidding me? Fish and chips out in the bush. <laughs> it's the little things, folks, it's the little things. Stick Pretty a bloody good if you ask me. Stick a fork in me, turn me over, I'm done. Now, of course, you might be thinking fish and chips is a big ask for the bush. But Tim is an expert chippy from way in his younger days. And he and Sean have put their heads together to come up with a solution. First, Tim parboils the potatoes, while Sean mixes up the barra with some salt, pepper, flour, and a pinch of curry. That's my idea, by the way. Then everything goes on the hot plate, with the chips shallow frying in oil. Trust me. This doesn't just look good, it's gonna be damn delicious. Oh, have a go, boys. Mate, I've had some fish and chips around the world, literally, but that takes the cake. It tastes like the Kimberley. It's got that fresh, mm. super clean, just cooked too, yeah. not overcooked, super moist inside. Mm. Let's not take anything away from Timbo's chips. Those chips are good. <laughs> they are superb. I've cooked a hell of a lot of camp meals, but this one will go down as probably one of the most memorable ever. You'll be able to catch a barra in the morning, oh, yeah. have it on the on the fire by the night time. That goes down as all time. I'll put the question out to you guys. What is the most memorable camp cook have you ever had? I'd love to know. Chuck it in the comments below. I'll go through them and um, hopefully get a bit of inspiration too. Right, guys, I hope you're enjoying part three of the Kimberley. Talk about adventure, hey? This really was a trip of a lifetime. Now, I just want to grab your attention just for a second because at the moment at Four Wheel Drive 24-7, we believe in giving back a little bit. Now, we want to give away a stack of prizes. We've got a prize pool of over $35,000 worth of prizes, making this competition that I'm about to announce the biggest in the history of our channel. Now, we're going to be choosing over 80 winners, so your actual chance of winning a prize is pretty darn good. Now, to make it really easy for you, you only have to do two things. Subscribe to our channel, which is going to take you about two seconds to do so. And also, there's a link below in the description you've got to follow so you can enter this competition. And I tell you what, with so many prizes up for grabs, I mean, this really is the biggest competition we've ever done. So, good luck. After a few weeks in the heat of the top end, your sense of temperature can get a little skewed. And a morning chill of almost 20 degrees Celsius has gotten us scrambling to light a fire. Like most mornings, the Maverick is being put to good use as a camp kitchen and Rocket practically has to fend off the morning crowd. Tell you what, we've eaten like kings on this trip. Boys over here right now, having barramundi wings for breakfast. I'm gonna have bacon and eggs, a little bit more traditional, but I guess it just goes to show how well prepared you can be. We've all got fridges, some of us have got freezers, we've had things frozen, we've had steaks. We really have eaten extremely well on this trip. There's a little bit of preparation before we left, and of course, take the Barra Buster 5000 with you, and you'll always have barramundi. Bacon and eggs, camper trailer, Kimberley Sunrise. Tell you what, if you're sitting at home right now thinking, geez, I wish I was there, stop wishing, start doing. It is as good as it looks. Beautiful. Now, despite a big push yesterday, we made it just 20 k's from the Berkeley to our current campsite. And with supplies getting thin, we know that we really have to pick up the pace. Our biggest concern at the moment is of course fuel, which we're chewing up at a fair old rate in those big sections of overgrown country. Well, this right here, this is the final jerry in camp. Everybody is running out of fuel. I've got the last jerry can here. We've got 160 k's to go. Just don't know if we're gonna make it, I honestly don't. Um, cross our fingers, but this right here, the magical last jerry can. 
Now, you'll remember that Ronnie is trying to push in from the other end of the track with top-up fuel for the convoy. But word has come through on the sat phone that he's waiting for the water to go down at the last major crossing, the Drysdale, right near the end of the track. So it looks like we're going to have to get to him. And today's objective is to make it to the King George River, about 40 k's ahead. We know that between us and the river is some big marsh country and thick scrub, but we're determined to make it. The camera crew are up front today and the big GU is taking a bit of a beating. It's also uncovering some big sections of hidden mud, which only really become visible once the lead vehicle has pushed through. Bit of mud on this track. I want to get, give it a go in a second and see what happens. just two or three rigs to go through, all traction just disappears. And the back of the convoy is having to give it a real nudge to get through. This is a quagmire. Once you take the crust off, just a boggy mess underneath. I was able to just idle through. Timbo had to give it the berries to get through, and Rocket is about six tonne in total. What are your bets at home? The Rock Rocket. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, that was a big bog hole. <laughs> what a challenge. Speaking of a challenge, spare a thought for Jesse, who has to give it everything he's got not to go down. <laughs> See the roost! <laughs> the roost! I thought I was done, man. <laughs> the mud from your whole wheels was just going scum. <laughs> I think that's what got me through the wind. like one of those sand drags. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Hot Wheels car. Getting it done. <laughs> up ahead, things just get more spicy. Oh, a bit of mud up in front, mate. It looks um, pretty boggy, boys. Whoa, uh, it's not too bad on the bottom to be honest boys, but you don't want to slow down. Second gear, low range. I want to go in a bit easy though, because I don't want to get too... Oh, hang on. I'm going to get into this. I'm going to get into this. I'm going to get into this. Go, son. Go, get through it. There goes a mirror. That's why you choose clear views. And out we come, the other end. Victorious. Victorious. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> Alright, let's give this a go. Here we go. Watch me mirror. Oh, they're going both be mirrors. Once again, Jesse is not holding back. <laughs> Drive it like a rental, mate. Oh, oh, oh. The <laughs> it might look dry, but this entire plain right here is made up of treacherous black soil. And you only have to slip off the track line by a few metres to be in real strife. So what we thought was going on here is this was the exit. It really is a matter of metres. It's literally just there. He's gone this way. And have a look at that ground. It's just a marsh. Deviating off the track can obviously have some dire consequences, but sometimes even staying on the track is not much better, with waterlogged creeks like this presenting a real challenge. All right, little bog hole here. It's actually quite a big one, and the camera car just got stuck in it, and I'm gonna have to give it everything, but doesn't quite work out, just put some max tracks underneath, I reckon that's the ticket. Just don't get suctioned down into that hole. Ooh, easier said than done, mate. That looks as stuck as, well, you know what, to Velcro. I've got a tyre halfway up. Or should I give it one more go? Yeah, see if you can go back a bit. Just this one here. Oh, yeah. We've got mass tracks in your 
really get it, but... Give it a go. The hope here is to at least pop Sean's tyres up to the top of the lip, as that little extra distance will make the recovery a lot easier. Nearly. Getting the front tyres up, in my opinion, is a big win because as soon as you get the front up, you know, if we winch them down into the bank, getting that tyre just up is going to make the winch so much easier. It's a good little tip as well. If you've got max tracks, don't be afraid to use them in a winching scenario because it'll take a lot of load off the winch. So it'll basically make a ramp for those front tyres. Instead of pulling it down in the bank, it sort of pulls it up and out, which is a lot safer. Winch track. Now, if you're going to use your max tracks in deep mud, it's a good idea to attach some lanyards so you can easily find them, which, let's be honest, Sean has completely forgotten to do. Soon enough, though, the maxis are back in position, ready for me to have a crack. Mate, I reckon, uh, look, if you can get it as far as those max tracks, you're doing bloody well. There's some big holes, unfortunately, some. <laughs> Some vehicles with bigger tyres went through and sort of turned it up a little bit. Who could that have been? I guess we'll never know. Here we go! Here we go! Yes! Nah, no way. I'm not getting out of this one on my own steam. But on the plus side, yeah. my tyres are sitting right up against the max tracks. So I've got a ready-made ramp to winch up on. That's the ticket. It's all about the right amount of throttle control. Yes. Tim, I reckon your best bet, mate, is to give it an absolute hiding. I want to hear thong slapping in Columbaroo, mate. All the slaps. Solid effort. Just on the max track, Santa Lou. Very soft. Well, that is a 10 out of 10 effort. But this mud hole is not giving away prizes. Jesse, you can't drive this. You're not even a winch truck driver, mate. This is easy. You're a winch truck poser, mate. Exactly. <laughs> What's he going to do here? I should get out of the way. Oh! 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 This guy... I still want to be a winch truck driver. You hung up. <laughs> and would you look at that. He was a whisker from making it through. Yeah, this wheel's off the ground, I think. But don't worry about the drive. Thank Rocket Rod for making a boat ramp for that oh. side, I reckon. Whoever comes in after us is going to think this was manicured. Look at <laughs> it. So close! Well, that was a lot of fun. But nonetheless, we're thankful that up ahead, the track heads back into drier country. And with it, the possibility of actually making up a K or two. You know, it goes without saying that tyres are probably most valuable asset on remote tracks like this when you're miles from anywhere. Your tyres, as we've found out the hard way in some instances on this trip, they are so important. In fact, it's probably one of the most important things got, you got going. The Kevlar sidewalls in those MTRs that I'm running are just absolutely superb. They've been doing a fantastic job. They give me a stack of grip, but more importantly, I've got the confidence that I'm not going to get a puncher and I'm not going to be stranded out here. The other thing to keep in mind as well, Jesse, He's been rocking a set of the Goodyear MTRs on the back. Now, he's in two-wheel drive because of the different size tyres between front and rear, and he's been doing most of the hard challenges in two-wheel drive. Those tyres offer so much grip, yet they're also really strong. They've got a tough sidewall, and they can handle the punishment that you're likely to get out here. As so often happens on this track, no sooner have we got a head of steam up before conditions close right down and up ahead, the track just seems to disappear into dense undergrowth. Two years of growth is a lot of time in anyone's book, but in combinations with a couple of big wet seasons that can drag entire trees across the landscape, it can feel at times like the track hasn't been driven in decades. Keep coming, keep coming. Yeah, keep steering up the bank a little bit. That's good. This is loose. There's some sort of vague resemblance of a track right here, but it's unfortunately covered in a lot of different sticks. There's, everything's 
fallen over the track, plus there's a heap of new growth as well. So we're just going to try and forge our way through. Graves up the front with the chainsaw having a cut. Um, all the boys' hands on deck just moving broken branches away. And Tim, of course, trying to blaze a track. Doesn't sound great, but that's progress. It takes us nearly two hours to push in this 100 metres of track, but with every vehicle, the going gets slightly easier. Nice, Timmy, nice. Oh, that was full on. Yeah, good luck, boys. Take it very slow and steady. Don't turn just yet, we'll try and get you down a bit before you turn. All right, By the time the convoy is through, this section almost looks like a track again. But all those sharp branches aren't exactly forgiving on tyres. I've been running a heavily plugged front left for the last 100 k's. And like much of the convoy, I've had to plug and re-plug every few k's just to keep running. But this tyre has finally given up, and so we're forced to use our final spare in the convoy, one of the Pilford 33s from Jesse's rig. I really hope that no one else plans to get a puncher, because we are now officially out of tyres. But we're not out of the game yet. We're getting quite creative with the, fixing these tyres at the moment. I think the record, we're up to about 30 plugs in the one tyre, trying to hold a bit of air, but I suppose when you're out in the bush, you've got to do what you can do to sort of get out of the bush. That means thinking outside the box. It means basically chucking the rule book out the window, just whatever you can do to get home. It sort of begs the question, I want to ask you guys this one because I guarantee you guys no doubt would have done a fair few bush mechanic fixes in your time. I want you to let me know in the comments the craziest bush mechanic fix you've ever done in order to get yourself home. I'm going to pick out the top five comments and you're going to win yourself a $100 snatch gift voucher. Let us know in the comment below your best bush mechanic fix to get you home. As the day gets on, we finally catch a break and are able to cover some ground towards the King George River. Using our eye in the sky to help us scout out the track ahead and re-find it when we stray off. And then right on beer o'clock, it looks like the King George is within striking distance. Mate, we are about ooh, a kilometre, two kilometres from the river crossing. I don't know what it's going to be like, but I do know that on the other side is an old mining road, mate, so she might get a bit better. We'll see how we go. Well, I reckon when we keep poking along this track, hopefully get to the river. Imagine a campsite right near the King George River. That'll do. And that's just what we found. A perfect spot near the crossing with access to fresh water and a flat bit of ground to roll out some canvas. Today represents the most Ks we've done of any so far on the trip. And Ronnie and our resupply is perhaps just 100 more Ks away. She's going to be tight, but we're making progress. We've got our camp set up pretty dialed at this point, and soon we are all set up for the night. Oh, I've got to say, today has certainly tested the big dirty 30 out. I mean, it's no show pony anymore. Have a look at it, there's mud all over it. There's grass seeds all through the inner cooler and up over the windscreen. We even got mud. If you look up on top of the rooftop tent, you know you're having a good day when you've got mud on the rooftop tent. And I reckon that the Dirty 30 has well and truly been tested. I've got to say, I'm absolutely stoked how this is handled. I want to go check the camper trailer though, because if you think this one's had a hard time on the tracks, the camper trailer, let's go see how that fared. Rocket, how are you, mate? Good, mate, yourself? Big cheers, what a day. What an absolute cracker. Been a massive day today. <laughs> That's a huge day. I just wanted to make sure that that camper trailer was actually still attached to the big 79 here, mate. Some of the tracks we did today, let's just say I saw the camper trailer airborne a couple of times. You've really towed this thing pretty hard, haven't you? Well, we were talking today about the hardest track that we've ever done in the history of this show. And this actual track was mentioned. Yeah. Now, obviously, we're pushing it through. It hasn't been open for a couple of years, so it's much harder than normal. But yeah, by the time we finish, it's going to be 15 days Yep. of some of the hardest tracks, certainly the hardest track I've ever driven yeah. in my life. And we've dragged 
the Maverick along with us. Yeah. And she's here. She's made it to that. the other end. Virtually, yeah. we've got another couple of days to go. But it's still plush inside, mate. I oh, know. It's still, <laughs> it's, it's still my home. I'm proud of it. No, that's gold, mate. Yeah. That is gold. But the fact is, she's here. She's still running. We well. still do our meals and everything. It's actually a testament to actually how well she's held up. Well, it's looking good, mate. Look, I'm going to go sit down by the fire, but a bit later, I'm just going to go check in the fridge and make sure all that all the beers are still cold because that's the real test of the game, in my opinion. <laughs> no worries, mate. <laughs> At this point of the trip, the fridges are not exactly what you'd call bursting with food. And we're finally nearing the end of our dinner supplies. It's time to get creative, and Chef Whale has just the solution. Well, folks, it's that time of trip. I mean, this has been an absolute epic. One for the ages, mate. It's been... Probably my best in since Laurel Springs, I'm going to say it. It's been tough yep. in so many ways, but so rewarding. I mean, yep. we've, we've gone through some amazing country. Dude, the Kimberley. And this time of year. This is the part where I need to cook everyone a feed. Yep. And as you can see, as you can see, I'm, I'm running really low on a lot of ingredients. I, we've got Iron Jacks though, There's mate. nothing under there. No, there's, no, there's nothing. I've nothing. raided a lot of things in my pantry and there's uh, not a lot going around, nothing. mate. So what I've got here is a couple of fishing rods. So yep. this is how we roll. Uh-huh. We go foraging. 100%. And gathering for food. It is now half past seven at night. Half past seven. The bite is on, I reckon. Well, mate, if it's okay with you, sure. I'm going to call this Desperado Dinner. You see, we're out of food. Yep. We're, we've been going for a 15 night straight. 100%. So it really is. It's whatever we can hunt and fish. I think we're onto this. That is uh, what tonight is going to be all about. I don't know if you saw. There's a good ah, bank over here. Let's go and try We're the cast. Yeah, let's go and have a cast over here. Done. Let's go. All right. All right, mate. I'm yep. just going to pop this up here just well, for a second. Well, the first nag that I wanted to hit yes. is... um. Look, just the common ones. That's that's the key with fishing. I think basically, you want to hit the common snags I'll first. I'll go in first, just mate. See what we got in here. All right. Well, have a rummage, mate. He hasn't got. Mate. Oh, hang on. I've got. What have we got? Yeah, I got pay dirt, mate. Pl we got noodles. Pl oh, I was going to say ribeye. Hopefully. No, we got. <laughs> he's, just, he's, got. Just, he's got. He's got. He's got, he's got he's just he's noodles. He's just got, got a heap we'll of take, noodles. We'll give me some of them. Yeah, take the noodles. I want to show the boys that I can catch as well. All right, let's All get right. out of here. That'll move on. That one. Well, that snag's done. Let's go up to the next bank. Let's move on. Hit the eddy. This is fishing. I love this. I know. Catch them. Great. This oh, is a good looking bloody. This I know. Is a good we've got a couple of mangroves, right mate. Here. You want to put a lure straight into yeah. probably. Oh, yeah. we've got some. I'll take that. Yeah, I'll soy. That. That's fantastic, mate. Hang that's on. a good catch. Hang what on. else we got Let's here? Let's open this right up. Ooh, look out. Oh, yeah. We're, We're go supposed to that. be in here. Mate, this is all right. Yeah, every, yeah, yeah. Get that, get that, get that, get that. Give me that. Take that. Take that. Take that. Don't you worry about it. Don't you worry about it, mate. Nothing, mate. Nothing, mate. We're just no. fishing tonight. Oh, what do you got there? Oh, just, oh, don't worry about it. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Good on you. Oh, you <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, sometimes when you're fishing, it's all good to come back to a known point. I, I, I don't really have... This is a terrible snag. I've fished it heaps. There's not much in here. Let me have a quick go at this. There's not much in here, eh? Oh, there's heaps of stuff in here. What are you talking about? <laughs> what What's this one? That's tofu. <laughs> got some veggies as well. Grab that. What's that there? There's some sweet potato. Sweet potato, that's all right. Yeah. We'll take that. Oh, come on! I, this is not my fridge! <laughs> Ooh, chilli sauce. Yeah, okay, that's Ooh, mine. Oh, that devil's tears. That's that mine. Yeah, that's mine. for you. Yep. You've got... For four eggs. Yeah, they're frozen too, <laughs> by the way. They're hard as a rock. All right, that'll do your snack. <laughs> oh, that's, that's all right. That's We're, the pillow Hopefully thing. you can get one more good fishing spot before the night's out. Can I go and get my tofu? <laughs> Last little stop here. Not much in here, mate. I'll tell you that for free. Well, what do you got in here? Can I have a look? There's some barra, but... Yeah, I'll, well, we've had a lot of barra, and, you know, to your credit, Dolomites, what are these? They're open, they smell too. They are little, little naughty boys. We don't need those tonight. No, we do not need those. Oh, they stink. I oh, know, I should be glad wrapping them. Oh, I see. Well, this is what we need. What do we need? A couple no, of beers, mate. No, no, no. A couple of beers. That'll do me. Put that down. <laughs> I'll see you back at the kitchen. Just one last stop. Just want to check the camera crew and see what they've got. This... <laughs> This is ridiculous. Sour squirms. Can't use those. What on earth? Hydrolite. They don't work that hard. Baby corn spears. All right, any port in a storm. That'll do. Well, believe it or not, there's actually quite a few ingredients here. I've got one. I've got Super a late entry. <laughs> That's all the camera crew had. Was baby, it, was baby it that corn or? spears. Well, let's have a go with these. Oh, I've got the water on the boil. Just Wait a second. That's What's not going to work. That's... What do you mean? Well, you I can't have enough. noodles and eggs and... Well, I can make it work. Where's Rocket? It'd be nice to have a bit of protein. Where's nice. Rocket? Rocket. I'm going to have the fire. I, I, think. I think he's near the fire. You probably... Oh, he always has lots of meat. He's, a, he's one of the best meat eaters I know. He is. Oh! Come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here. Come here, come here. Look at this. 
Oh, it's a gourmet <laughs> feast in here. <laughs> Take that. Oh, yeah. 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 Wait, 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 that, that changes the whole game. I'm yeah. gonna go and put those in the barbecue, mate. That's a good idea. If you can get that on the barbecue, yep. I'll keep. Is this mince? That's mince, I believe. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'll keep that. I'll do something with that later. Right, I'll, you do the vegetarian side of things. I'll go and look after the man <laughs> side of things. I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> How are we looking, mate? Quick question. Yeah. How long do two minute needles take to cook? Three minutes! Exactly right. And that's just <laughs> taken there. I think, I, think, I think they're done. There's a lot of noodles that in there. It is like the spaghetti monster. We need to get the water out of there and I want to transfer them into the lid of a dury. I reckon get the get the get that. Right. I'm gonna get that. This is gonna be a disaster. No. I need to get the you water need a out. bigger Oh, this is Oh, don't oh, come near right. me! Just get it in okay. quick! Okay! Okay! Go, to, go, oh wait, don't, they're don't coming out. Don't noodles. Come back up. Rocket steps. Come back up. He's going to get angry. Oh, wait, okay, go, 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 go. Go further. It's right at the bottom of the steps. Yeah, it's a rocket. moist, oh wait, wait, wait. That'll do, that'll, that'll do, that'll do. That'll that's loot. all I can't do anymore. Bring her up, bring her up. Bring her up. Oh, back on the plate. <laughs> back on the plate, that's exactly what we wanted. All right, <laughs> we're basically going to pour these now. <sighs> It's a really small set of pliers. The things you do. I'm just going to pour them straight wait, into the wait, lid. Wait, let me help you with this. Look at Come that, here, that is a lot of there noodles. Not that. What are you doing? No, we, we finished. Yeah, <laughs> get goodness. rid of that. Thank goodness. I need that actually. <laughs> all right, what's all right, next, Tiger? All right, all right, all right, right. This is where things get a bit hectic right. in the kitchen. Right, mate, a little bit of olive oil in the pan. Bingo, that's what we're talking about. I get it. get on the go. It's like a, it's like when you're a band. Bit of you garlic. just know what bit each other's playing. A bit of garlic. Thank you. Where'd that come from? <laughs> <laughs> Three and a half shakes of garlic. Four. Actually, put all the garlic in. Because it's the desperado dinner at the end of the day. You want, put it, all you in. want it all. Put it all in. Have you got any uh, spices, condiments? Yes, like we that? do. What's this here? Now's here? the time to el put them in straight in the pan. We're going salt. Bit of salt. That'll Salty loo. boy. That'll do. A little bit of onion. Put a bit of Cholula in. This is the time for it. I mean, it's never a time in a young man's life where you don't want a bit of Cholula. Exactly right. And I've got some special sauce here too. What have you got? Devil's tears. Oh, gee. Let's put a bit of that in there. Just a tiny, tiny bit, tiny bit, tiny no, bit, tiny bit. it's not that bit. bad. Devil's tears, that can't be good for you. Yeah, that's the go. Oh, a couple yeah, out. Done with that. Couple out the side. This is actually going to, guys, except for this. <laughs> this is actually going to be all time. I, I think I, it will. I've got, I've got that feeling. You know, you know when you start cooking something, you're not real confident how it's going to go down. I'm not real confident. <laughs> All right, what are we up to? Baby spears, corn. They can go in last. Baby corn spears. Oh, I'm going to put them in now. Seriously. Goodness gracious. When, when you're discarding the water, find the last place you put it. And put it back there. Just tell Rocket that. Rocket, watch your first step. <laughs> it's a doozy. Give that a stir. Mate, it's looking absolutely sensational. It really is, it really is. We've got the mince, it's all gone with the veggies and yep. all the other bits and pieces. What do you got here? What do you mate? Oh, oh, yes. oh, that's what you wanted? Superb. Imagine that. Thank you so much. I'm basically going to put all of the two minute noodles. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's what we wanted to see. It's a lot of noodles. But look, look at the end of the day, mate. <laughs> when have you been at a party where someone said, there's too much noodle here? Never. Exactly Actually, I'm... Right? Wait, I've been a few. Wait, <laughs> never. Yeah, yeah, it reminds me of my childhood. We've got, it's either beef or pork mince, we don't know. There, put that also, in there. Also, we've got pork pieces. Oh. That is the best. Mm. Put them straight in. I'm just going to pour that around that casually. That's a massive food right Not there. Not too much soy. Soy goes a long way. All right, what I'm going to do, like any good baker, is make a well in the middle. Boom. Oh, they're half frozen, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, get them in there. <laughs> Where's that one? Oh, it's, a, it's like an ice it's cube. It's like an ice egg. ball. There we go. Yes. There we go. It's a desperado meal, I'll tell you oh, what. Oh, look at that. There's a frozen yolk. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You can oh, stir that through. Guys, get your plates out. We're on. I think it's ready. That hasn't even made a dent okay, in uh, the pork bone. You're going here, Tim. You're on. 
Oh, oh. Boys, a little bit of a taste test, eh? Yep, let's do it. It's a big piece of pork. Mm. You know, when the noodles taste like that, it's just the mm. right amount of spice. It's got a little bit of protein in there, a few mm. little bits and pieces. Yeah. That is, that is, what I, what I like about this, it's a combined mm. camp effort. Everyone um, has contributed this meal. Keep the toilet paper at hand, because I reckon this is oh, going to go through like a dose of the salt. little number. I reckon go sit around the fire, yeah. chuck mm. another log on it, and, um, Mate, there's, there's enough at seconds and thirds. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you like this. It's because, actually really good. Because we're, it's really good. We're going to have this for the rest of our trip. <laughs> well, All the right. trip. All right. Let's Luckily, the trip's coming there. to an end. No, it's good. It's really good. It's really good. There's more than last night's dinner weighing on our minds at camp this morning. We've still got nearly 100 kilometres to cover to get to Ronnie and the crossing of the Drysdale. And even if conditions improve, fuel is going to be a big concern. Well, what a stunning morning. This marks just over two weeks out bush, living out of the old Mitz alloy canopy. I had no problems coming into this trip knowing that I had a brand new canopy on the back because, of course, I spent four weeks in WA living directly out of the back of the older style canopy. And when Tim came to me and said he's made a whole bunch of improvements with this one, I knew he'd nail it. Now, there's two things I look at when it comes to canopies. I'm not gonna go into the specifics. That's up to Timbo down there. He's the bloke with all the brain power. I'm just the nugget at the end that uses it. There's only two things I'm interested in. One, can't fall apart on me out here. If this thing starts to crack and fall apart like those cheap ones do, there's no point in bringing it out here. I don't wanna be worried about my canopy. I need to be able to just get out here, do the job, do the work, go on holiday, whatever it is. Second thing, of course, it's gotta be livable. It's no point in just having a box on the back that you throw everything in, then when you open the door, it all falls on the ground. You've got to be able to live out of it. And look at this thing. It's just the most livable canopy I've ever used. So together now, I think I've lived out of a mitts canopy probably more than anyone, would you agree? So <laughs> with all that experience, I can literally say this bad boy behind me here is built for exactly what we're doing out here. I'll tell you what, we're nearing the end. I'm a little bit sad about that. This has been probably one of the highlights of my time doing these sorts of trips. Soon enough, we're packing up camp and getting ready for the final push to the Drysdale. With a lot of miles to cover, it'll be our biggest day by far in terms of kilometres. And of course, we'll be coming in on the fumes of an empty tank. Then of course, there's the crossing of the Drysdale itself, probably the deepest river of the trip. But that's a problem for down the road. Well, mate, another epic camp. And um, I'm surprised everyone's faring quite well after last night's cook up because um, a little bit of a head count with uh, everyone still here. It was a rough start to the morning, I won't lie, mate. <laughs> Well, mate, this is, uh, what, King George River. Yeah, she's flowing a bit too. Still a bit of runoff happening at the moment. And then we've got a, a lazy 90 clicks down to the Drysdale, mate. I'm sort of got me hopes up that she's going to be a pretty good run. You know it's not going to be, mate. Don't <laughs> get that out of your head. You're right, you're right, but I'm living on hope. Yeah, nice hard bottom so far. I think it's just the entries and exits we're going to need to worry about in this creek crossing. As we've seen so often along this trip, the track is hardest to find coming in and out of the crossings, with exits washed away and the undergrowth hiding any tyre marks. This is, uh, this is no way there's a track right here. Eventually though, Sean's found a line forward that connects up with the original track further ahead. There's nice rocks in here, otherwise I would have sunken by now. What a tricky way to go. Croc invested borders all the way. With the river behind us, we found what we were looking for. The remains of the old mining road. It's not exactly a highway, but at least we can see where we need to get to. Ahead, the camera boys have come across some quicksand that looks suspiciously boggy. <laughs> I 
This has been one of the biggest trips I've ever undertaken in the VMAX. And after weeks of deep water, rocks and punching through scrub, well, she's held up a treat. Aside from some punctures and a fairly empty fuel tank, I've had zero mechanical issues. You can't come up here without a reliable rig and I'm stoked how the D-Max has gone. <laughs> That's fun. Tim and Harry have been driving this track like heroes all trip and today is no different. I was not hanging around for that one. No, no, no. You've got to hand it to Rocket. Opening up the Umbi track with a camper trailer is one heck of an ask. But both the Big Auto and the camper have come through so far with flying colours. And look, Jesse might be limping in two-wheel drive, but he's piloted that rig like a boss. Good on you, mate. Up ahead is something we haven't seen in weeks. An open stretch of track and the chance to stretch the legs a little bit. After averaging less than 30 k's a day so far, 30 k's an hour feels like a motorway. Well, I've got to say, fellas, this is the smoothest road I have driven in probably about two and a bit weeks. Without a shadow of a doubt, it's uh, almost unnerving. I know, I just checked, I had to look down at the speed. Just before I was doing about 40, 50 k's an hour, which is, wow, well, that's a land speed record for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I felt a bit uneasy going that quick straight away. As the road opens up and the k's start to drop away, the fuel lights are coming on across the convoy and for some of us, the gauge is literally on empty. After making it so far, it would be gutting to end up stranded on the side of the track. Lucky for us, an angel of sorts has appeared up ahead. Well, this is pretty exciting. Um, just heard over the radio, it was pretty muffled and mumbled, but Ronnie is I reckon only a few k's away, he's come the other direction down the track. Oh, is that you, Ronnie? Yeah, mate. Ah, uh, Ripper, Ripper. You might even make it, Graham. Mate, I'm coming. Literally, I'm not even putting my foot on the accelerator. I'm just coasting behind in your dust, trying not to uh, use any fuel at all. Well, sounds like you're not too far, Ronnie. Um, which, oh, there we go. I can see some yellow Max tracks there as a light bar. Look out. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it. Couldn't bloody read about it. People you run into. Thank God for that, because I reckon I was within 15 k's of running out. Hey. Hey. Good to see you, mate. Good oh, to see you. You mad bugger. How are you, brother? Good, good, good to see good. you. Hey, how are you? How did you guys like the track? Mate, Sick, wow. man. Wow. Yeah, we've got some stories for you, Ronnie. Yeah. I can tell you, Ronnie is a welcome sight right now. And better yet, he's brought gifts. Not only has he got Jerry's full of fuel strapped on the back, but also a bunch of spare tyres. Enough to swap out our plug tyres at the end of the track before we start the trek back to civilization. Soon enough, the deliveries are underway and the Umbulgari track is almost conquered. But of course, this adventure, well, it's not quite done yet. And Ronnie is soon leading us to the final hurdle of the Umbulgari track, the mighty Drysdale River. She is running a brimmer. I've never ever seen it this wide. Last time we were here, it was about a quarter of the size. Maybe a quarter? And about Maybe. ankle deep. We yep. actually camped over there. On that rock. On that rock over there. So this changed a heck of a lot. Well, just so we're not taking any risks, what we're going to do is for all the light, lighter vehicles in the convoy, we're actually going to attach them to a heavier vehicle. If the lighter vehicle starts to float, the heavier vehicle should be able to tow them on the right track. I tell you what, Sean, if we were a band, this is a song we've rehearsed many a time. We're now going live in front of 90,000 people at the auditorium, mate. All right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna concentrate on following you and keeping the strap taut and giving it Bunty when Bunty is needed. Yeah, copy, copy. Let's have a go, eh? Here we go. This is exciting. Yeah, just checking in, mate. So far, so good. Maybe for you, look how deep it is already. Oh, I'm nervous, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. That's deep. That's the deep bit. Wowzers. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. 
Oh, did you float a bit then? Oh, fully floated. Yes! Well done, mate, well done. <laughs> <You. laughs> that was proper deep in the middle, eh? Yeah, yeah, look at the high tide marks on my car. I can't believe, oh no, no, there's water inside. <laughs> All right, I may not talk much here <laughs> because this is a little bit daunting. It's got a bit of pace. Get ready. Here we go so, into the big hole. Oof. <laughs> and on the berries. Oh, oh that's not oh, I love that. this car. <laughs> it is good, eh? <laughs> Holy shoot. Woo! Oh, it is a little donkey. Jesse's loose, mate. He doesn't even need me. <laughs> yes! We bloody done it! <laughs> we the trap us up! We done it! All the way! Yes! We got it to the end! We got it to the end! <laughs> the last crossing, the biggest, the fastest, the widest. Let's see, here we go. Only one way to find out. Onwards. Oh, he's starting to move a bit. He's going to have that big hole. Oh, she's deep, all right. Oh, that's a pucker moment. Oh, scrabbly. My lord. She's stepping all over the place. The camp is staying behind me, though. Yeah, yeah scary look. <laughs> He's all, he's all business. But now he's on off, mate. Fuck us, Dad. Get across. Yes. Well done, mate. Hey. Well done. Hey. Hey. It's beautiful. <laughs> and with that, folks, the Umbulgari track is done and dusted. 15 days, countless challenges, and some of the most stunning remote touring you could ever hope to do. And, folks, you can do it thanks to the tours Ronnie offers across the winter season. Well, Ronnie, I've got to say, mate, massive thank you for allowing us to come down up here and uh, have a go, go at this track. It's been a wild adventure, mate. Oh, mate, it, it was my pleasure. I'll tell you what, um, you guys did really good, eh, dude? To come through that track, being the first guys to uh, push it through, and, uh, you know, no matter where the track was, you made it. You made it, mate. Good on you. Good on you, fellas. Cheers, Ronnie. Mate, that's my third time on the Umbi track. And I've seen it in three vastly different, every time. Been totally different, mate. Absolutely blowing my mind. I've got to tell you, Ronnie, I can't thank you enough for inviting us back. I never remembered it ever been as difficult as what it was this time. And I've had an absolute blast, so I do thank you again. Yeah, Ronnie, mate, thank you. From Harry and myself, it's been a real eye-opener and an absolute honour to be able to crack through it and 100%. do it the first time was, was epic. Yeah, thanks, Ronnie, for uh, leading us through and letting us uh, letting us loose on the rest of the your land for the rest of the time. I tell you what, it's probably the most epic four-wheel drive slash camping trip I've ever been on. Had a ball, learn a heap, saw a heap, and yeah, I'll definitely be back one day, I reckon. <laughs> welcome, buddy. You're welcome. Well, there you go, eh? This has been an absolute epic. I mean, the sort of adventure that dreams are literally made of. I mean, we've seen a lot. We've travelled so much track. We've forged our own track through some of the toughest country in Australia. I mean, the sense of achievement is absolutely huge. The boys have done so well. I mean, to be able to travel with a good group of mates like this, you couldn't have asked for a better bunch of blokes to come and experience this adventure with. I reckon I might be shouting the first beer when we get back to civilization. For tonight, Ronnie's found a spot just a little bit further down the river giving us one last chance to soak in the Kimberley. This really has been a trip we'll never forget. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, Woo. mate. Ronnie. Cheers, Cheers boys. boys. Good on you. Nice one. What a nice trip, one. Hey? What a mate, trip. I tell you what, we've been doing this together now. I'm not going to go and get all romantic here, but it's been <laughs> better part of a decade. Yeah. And I'm going to put this trip, I mean, last year, COVID, it was a bit of a slow year. But this, to come back and do a trip like this, and we've still got a couple of all big ones planned. Yeah. This has been probably one of the highlights of my career. Oh, without, with, without a doubt. With, without a doubt, there's so yep. many individual things, from catching two one metre barra, right through to epic calves. <laughs> <laughs> I've been going on about that fish for some time. And so now. you should, so you should. Yeah, it was, look, it was a big look, just for me, and I think every single bloke here is in exactly the same boat. Yep. 
this is proper adventure. This is what we 100%. live for. This is why we build forward drives. This yep. is why we dream about this sort of stuff. Like yep. Every single day of the week for me. Absolutely. Folks, look, if you ever get a chance, I honestly recommend coming up to the Kimberley. I mean, do a tag along with Ronnie. He's got some of the best tag along tours going in the country. Yeah, yeah. But at the very least, get up here and experience this for yourself. Get up before the crowds. Get up when it's nice and warm like it is right now and see what I reckon is one of the single best places in the world. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Go on. It is the best four-wheel drive destination in this country. You just heard that. That's coming from the Sean M. Whale. <laughs> yeah. I just made the end bit up. I'm it's not got, sure if that even it's exists. It's got everything. Fishing, four-wheel drive and camping. Yep. It's just amazing. I mean, you guys saw it for yourselves, but come experience it. That's the next step. No it more. really is. It really is. This time tomorrow night, if all goes according to plan, we'll be in the Kununurra pub. And for the first time in my life, I'm not looking forward to going to the pub. I'd rather be out of here. Yeah, did I really that, I really did would. I really would, folks. We're going to have a couple of beers before I go. We're going to try and catch some cherubim tonight. Yes, see how we go on that yes, one. Yes, we are. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. All right. 24-7. Cheers, cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers boys. Cheers, good cheers, on cheers mate. Thanks. Good on you, man. Yeah, cheers, good on Ronnie. You guys. Good on you, brother. Yeah. Folks, we really hope you've enjoyed our Kimberley adventure. But if you need more, then tune in next week as we delve into the untold stories of the trip, go behind the scenes, and answer your Kimberley questions. So leave a comment or a question below and stick around because the outtakes are coming up. But first, let's look at some of the gear that got us through this track. Well, guys, now you want to reflect on some of the gear we've used to make this trip possible. And I mean, this has been an epic, and yep. the gear we've used has probably helped us get right through this trip. To be immensely, honest, yeah. immensely, yeah. Mate, I want to kick off with one of the most important things I carry in my forward drive. You're probably thinking a toolkit, spare parts. I was thinking beer. Exactly right. Keep, keep, your, beer, keep your beers nice and cold. I'm talking about the Michael Wynn fridge. Mate. Oh, of course. Yeah, Fridges yeah. have been, like, we've run, I've run two in the back of my vehicle. I've had yep. one out in the elements the whole time. We've had freezers, we've had fridges, yep. we've had fridge freezers, we've had just about every single Michael Wynn that is out on the market. And I'll yep. tell you what, we've had beautiful meat just about every single night. We've had Zupa, cold beers. We've had Zupa Duper. We've had Zupa Duper. <laughs> uh, little icebox. I don't which think we, we showed those we didn't on camera. Show those we wanted to act tough in front of the camera. <laughs> That's but, right. But I tell you what, having those little luxuries when you're out camping, especially yep. in remote destinations, you need to make sure they're reliable and they're going to mm. last in some of the toughest conditions. Where now it's 40 degrees plus yep. every single day. Yeah, it's been warm. And those fridges have not skipped the beat. It's a game changer. Now, it might come as a surprise to you folks out there. It won't come as a surprise to this bloke here, but I'm a bit of a grub. <laughs> uh, I just went down to the water then and had my first wash in about eight days and I've been pretty unpleasant to be fair. <laughs> I've been fairly unpleasant, I haven't really cared for myself too much, but I have cared for my seat covers and that's because I've got Razorbacks in there. Now what I like about the new Razorbacks is that we got a bit of fancy stuff done mm. on them. We've got a bit of embroidery. You know, you know it's a big know, word. You know one thing I've been I've been loving about the Razorbacks mm. is I've got some fancy seats in the Dirty 30. Yep. I've been disgusting. I've had no air con. I've been True. sweating more than I should. He's feral. And um I know that my seats are protected yeah. underneath. So It's just one of those things you set and forget, yeah. really. You just put them on, you don't worry about them. If you've got yourself any sort of car, doesn't matter what it is, get a decent set of seat covers, raise the backs, put them on, never think about it again. Yeah, exactly it's right. It's rock and roll. Exactly right. I'm going to say one product, mate, that I yep. think you can definitely agree. If we didn't have this product, we might not have got out of some of those bog holes. I'm talking about the Max Tracks. Oh, yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Now, we use the Max Tracks in so many different ways, mm. not just in the sand, which everyone knows you can use them for. That's their number one, yeah. The thing I really learned on this trip is how valuable they are in the black soil, especially when you're trying yep. to winch. Yep. They'll minimise the load on the winch. So you get them under those front tyres, so you can break the suction of the vehicle, get the vehicle up, yep. and only then does it make the winch easier. So many other things too. You use them as, uh, we used them to put the jack on so the jack doesn't sink into the sand. <laughs> yep. uh, I think Rocket used them one night to level the camper trailer. Yep. It's, I mean, little things you don't even think about. I reckon Max Tracks, get yourself a decent mounting system. Sean O's got them yeah, mounted up I there. I like how I've done that. Super, super slick. I've got a really nice one up on, on the D-Max here. You can get to them nice and easy. They're a bit like carrying a shovel. Well, there you go, guys. There's a couple of the items that we've used yep. to get us through this trip. Now, don't go anywhere because coming up next, mate, we've got the funny bits. And let me tell yeah. you, we went a little bit tropper on this one. We so really did. There could be some weird stuff beer. going on. Yep. <laughs> Most of it will be him. I'm sure of it. I'm it's sure of it. It's going to be a fair bit. Hi, welcome to the Tim and Harry Show. 6 2, 60 cans to Columbo Roo. Rocker got a slap. Graham did two. 60 cans to Columbo Roo. <laughs> That'll wake you up. Don't hit a hand, hand man like that. Graham, I believe the crossing is that way. <laughs> as any as any good chef knows, right. you always go first. Oh! oh! How are you going, Jesse? Are you taking up the? <laughs> I can't say. <laughs> okay, ready? Yep. How are you going, Jesse? You enjoying um, um, coming on the Getting out of the way. Strew. It's too close. 
day 14 of the bush. I've gone unhinged. That's right. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Well, what's happened here is that Timbo thought this was the exit, but in actual fact... I made a stew and it made everyone poo. 60 cans to Columbaroo. <laughs> okay, little disclaimer here. If I was to do this at home and I was trying to impress a young lady or something like that, i will get those eggs and i will put them in a separate pan. I'd make an omelette. I'd bring the omelette out because everyone knows how to make an omelette. What's she doing? Why are you doing this? Um, she's watching me pensively with her little eyes and... <laughs> Can't use that. I don't know. We've been losing a long time, mate. I tell you a dream I had the other night. <laughs> Just start again. Here you go. <laughs> oh, forgot to turn you up again. Like, subscribe, put the bell on. 60 cans to Columbo Roo, 60 cans to Columbo Roo. We've just finished the Yumbi track and now it's up to you. 60 cans to Columbo Roo. See you next time.